Managers of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant say 10 of their workers have been exposed to radiation above the safety limit. They say a machine spraying cooling mist was likely to blame. The workers took radiation checks before leaving the plant compound on Monday. The readings were five times the safety limit set by Tokyo Electric Power Company. The exposure was concentrated around the workers' faces. The utility officials say the workers are showing no unusual symptoms. The officials believe the workers were sprayed while waiting for a bus near the plant's control room. They say a machine was spraying mist to help prevent heat stroke among the workers. The officials say the machine drew water from a dam about 10 kilometers away from the plant. The same water is used for toilets and other facilities. The operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says it will start pumping up underground water at the site. The industry ministry says 300 tons of radiation contaminated water there is leaking into the ocean every day. You have your colander in the sink and just slowly pour your water into it. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, proposed the plan on Monday to a panel of the Nuclear Regulation Authority. Workers at the plant created an underground wall to stop tainted groundwater from leaking into the sea, but the water level continues to rise. The firm says it will start pumping out 60 tons of groundwater per day near an embankment between the plant's number one and two reactors and 80 more tons per day at another site in September. The authority told the company to step up monitoring of the groundwater level as it changes due to rain. It also warned of possible effects of the approaching typhoon season. As the operator of the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant struggles to plug leaks of radioactive water, workers at the plant have told the ABC that contaminated water has most likely been seeping into the sea ever since the disaster two and a half years ago. Japan's nuclear watchdog has described the leaks as a state of emergency. Workers have told AM they don't have much faith in TEPCO's ability to handle the situation and they claim another accident is inevitable. A rare insight into the working conditions at the plant. Fujimoto-san is 56 years old and the proud grandfather of two young boys. But he has to hide his real job from them because Fujimoto-san fears they'll shun him if he tells them he's a decontamination worker at the Fukushima nuclear plant. We work at the most dangerous place in Japan, Fujimoto-san tells me. Not only that, I work 12-hour shifts and only get paid 11,000 yen, he says. That's $125 a shift, or $10 an hour, for working inside the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. And if TEPCO caught Fujimoto-san speaking to me, he'd pay a much higher price than that. If TEPCO knew I was meeting with you, I'd be fired for sure. Speaking out is an act of suicide, he says. I'm meeting Fujimoto-san after one of his 12-hour shifts, and I want to know how TEPCO is faring at trying to stop the leak of 300 tonnes of radioactive groundwater every day. Fujimoto-san just shakes his head. Steam came out of the Reactor 3 building the other day, he tells me. When it came out, TEPCO didn't even tell us. I found out about it on the TV news after I got home from work, he says. Fujimoto-san isn't the only nuclear worker who believes TEPCO is struggling to cope with the crisis at the Fukushima plant. Suzuki-san is a 12-year TEPCO veteran and a former Fukushima site foreman. And he says the leaks of contaminated water into the Pacific and nothing new. I believe it's been leaking into the ocean from the start of the crisis two and a half years ago, Suzuki-san tells me. TEPCO probably knew this but did nothing because they didn't want to cause an outcry, he says. While many in Japan worry about another disaster at the Fukushima plant, the welfare of workers there isn't often raised. And for proud grandfather Fujimoto-san, there's a nagging fear that something could go wrong at any time. There are still reactor buildings we haven't gotten into yet, he tells me. So there's always the possibility of another explosion, and if that were to happen, we, the workers, would be the first victims. I fear that a lot, he says. Our interview over, Fujimoto-san peels off his work overalls. He's heading to his grandkids' house, and he doesn't want his secret to slip out. 
A troubling revelation. The Japanese government believes the stricken nuclear reactors at Fukushima are leaking 300 tons of radioactive water into the ocean every day. To give you some idea, that's way more than an average American family consumes every year. The government says the leak's been going on for most of the two and a half years since an earthquake and a tsunami smashed the reactors. The owner of the nuclear power plant, Tokyo Electric and Power Company, or TEPCO, says the 300 tons is only a guess. Guess or not, it adds to growing doubts about TEPCO's efforts to clean up. The Japanese government has become impatient. The original estimate for the cost of the cleanup was $11 billion and was supposed to take up to 40 years. After the disaster, TEPCO set up a panel of experts to review what went wrong and make recommendations to help the utility restart operations at Fukushima Daiichi. Dale Klein, a former chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, heads the committee. Welcome to Link Asia. Okay, the leak of uh, contaminated water into the sea is the latest in a series of problems TEPCO's had since the disaster in March 2011. So what do you think? Are they covering up? You know, I don't believe they're covering up at all. I think they really have a very difficult time with their communication program, and I have described it as being incompetent. Uh, they really don't do well on uh, letting people know exactly where they stand at any given time. They want to know all the answers before they talk to the press or to the public, and they really need to change that. So no cover-up. Uh, is it a PR mistake then? I think it's definitely a mistake, and we've encouraged them to form a risk communication office they have established one, but in this case it failed. Uh, it sounds as if leakage of radiation into the sea is a fundamental problem. What are TEPCO's options at this point? Well, this current leak that they're uh, dealing with has to do with uh, water that's uh, located in a trench. It's basically for cable trays and for uh, pipes. Uh, after the accident, it had considerable amount of radioactive water uh, they knew that it had uh, contaminated water. They thought that they had the leak stopped uh, several months ago, and it turns out that their fix did not work. So now they're having to go through and uh, put an additional barrier to prevent the water from leaking out of this tunnel into the uh, ocean. With all this trouble around the cleanup, what's the future of nuclear power in Japan? That's a good question. Uh, in my view, uh, Japan needs safe, reliable nuclear energy. Uh, they have to import so much of their fossil fuels that if they forego the nuclear option, it will dramatically change their entire economy, particularly their manufacturing uh, enterprise. So there's no reason that they cannot have safe, reliable nuclear energy, just like they have a very well-known manufacturing capability. They just need to change their safety culture have conservative decision-making processes and make sure that they instill public confidence so that the people of Japan will believe and trust what the industry says about nuclear energy. So how is the industry doing in terms of public education since polls show most Japanese are against nuclear power? At the moment I don't think they're doing very well. I think uh, they need to continually be proactive, they need to be more open, more transparent, and I think the responsibility for educating the public in Japan is not just a responsibility of TEPCO, it's of the entire nuclear industry, the government, and universities. It's very easy to let people say they don't want nuclear energy, but they really need to understand what their options are if they forego that option. And that will mean uh, less reliable electricity, more contribution to global climate change, and other factors. So. If you ask anyone if they want nuclear energy, they usually say no, but if you ask them if they want electricity, the answer is yes. They just need to understand what their options are. Okay, so still some tough challenges ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dale Klein is chairman of TEPCO's Nuclear Reform Monitoring Committee. You can learn more about him on our experts page. In other Asian countries, nuclear power is in trouble too. In South Korea, there are revelations that inspectors faked results of safety tests of reactor equipment. Three reactors have been closed and authorities are poring over records to see if a dozen others were also given phony safety certificates. China's ambitious nuclear power program is also struggling. Protests have forced the halt of construction in Guangdong of a nuclear plant for enriching uranium to fuel reactors. And in India, protesters held up construction of a reactor in the state of Tamil Nadu for more than a year because of safety concerns.
Japan's industry ministry will ask a group of experts to re-examine the safety of its plan to bury highly radioactive waste from nuclear power plants. Officials began selecting disposal sites in the year 2000. But there has been no progress amid public concerns about safety. The plan calls for burying nuclear waste in a stable stratum more than 300 meters underground. The plan's feasibility was based on a report compiled in 1999 by a government-affiliated organization. The ministry will set up a working group of experts as early as September to re-examine the plan's safety for the first time in 14 years. The ministry will ask academics to recommend experts with a neutral view. The experts will check whether an underground disposal facility will be able to store nuclear waste for a long period of time, even if earthquakes and crustal movements occur. They will use knowledge learned from the March 2011 quake and nuclear disaster. Sunday marks two years and five months since the March 11th disaster. The residents of a town about 10 kilometers from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi plant have visited family graves before the Buddhist Bon holidays. Many gravestones were washed away by the tsunami and weeds have grown around the foundations. Some people had difficulty finding the graves. My dear, I'll come back next month to see you again. Sunday marks two years and five months from the March 11th disaster. A group of volunteers is searching for people still missing after the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in northeast Japan. Japan's modest recovery is creating greater demand for power. The country's energy consumption is set to mark its first year-on-year -year rise in three years. The Institute of Energy Economics forecasts Japan's energy consumption for fiscal 2013 will be up 0.7% from the year before. This is a reversal of two years of declines following the March 2011 disaster. The reason is the rise in power usage by retailers and hotels on the back of an economic recovery. Steel and cement plants are also using more energy as they ramp up production. Meanwhile, household energy use continues to drop thanks to power-saving efforts. Officials at the Institute say Japan's energy consumption may rise further in fiscal 2014 if the global economy continues to improve. When the fish Catch fire, will it be worth it then? And when the cancer rates ninety percent or higher, will it be worth it then? When the whole world's a war over water and oil, will it be worth it then? There's no more fighting, cause there's no more spoils, will it be worth it then? If not, if not, what will it take to make you change your mind? What kind of sign can convince you that people are worth more than you? Our greatest threat Will it be worth 